Well, hello, hello, hello. It is Friday, Friday at noon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Focus on It Friday with Dr. Brandy B. Of course, I am Dr. Brandy B. And today we are going to take the work out of homework. Come on in, come on in, grab all your friends, tell them to come on in. They can have a child with ADHD and need some tips on uh, navigating homework. Uh, they can have, um, they themselves could be in school and trying to figure out how to navigate homework, or they could just be trying to problem solve and get organized and not even have ADHD in that awesome. But come on in, let me know that you are here. Let me know who you are. Um, and I am going to be so excited. Hello, Miss Chiquita. Good afternoon to you, girl. Good afternoon. Let me get my video going. There we are live right now. I'm going to pin that video up. And um, welcome. Hello, Miss Sadie. We missed you last week. I saw Miss Sadie uh, at church and uh, she said she was out running some errands, but it is good to be missed. That means that I know that you are always here. So I am so happy to see you here. We've got Miss Keen. Hello, Dr. Brandy. Praise God. You made it through last night. Yes, and everyone. So if you are in the Birmingham area, central um, to eastern Alabama, um, even western, northwestern parts of Alabama, we know that storms came through last night. I have not heard of any casualties, but I do know that there was some property destruction. Uh, so we hope that everyone here is safe and all of your loved ones are as well. Um, but please, we appreciate you being here. We're so grateful that you came out to share with us. You know, I just have to spend those first few minutes getting everything set up so that I can see your comments and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so today we are going to talk about taking the work out of homework or tips for just getting organized and not getting stressed about tasks that have to be completed. Let me know that you're here. You know, I may not be able to see you here if you don't say hello. So just tell us hello. Now, if you're on your job, you might not want to tell us hello, right? Because uh, we don't want your boss to catch you on uh, listening to Dr. Brandy B and then invite you to have Dr. Brandy B pay your bills. So we don't want that. But if you can listen, we love to have you greet us. Hello, mommy. Mommy says, Dr. Brandy B, I am here. We are so glad that you are here with us. Miss Luella Marbury, also my church member. Hello. Thank you for coming. Always, always, always present. And we love to have her here as well as Auntie Julia. She says good afternoon to everyone. That's right. Because over here, Dr. Brandy B, we're family, right? A lot of you all are my family, my blood or marriage or heck, I don't even know how we're related anymore. It's been so long. But we are certainly family here at Dr. Brandy B. We've got Miss Lovey Banks here. Thank you so much for joining. Y'all have been rocking with me since the very beginning, putting up with me. And I appreciate you. My sister, Erica Harris, says, hello, sis. Hello, sis, to you. And I hope my nephew shared uh, the news with you that I sent him yesterday. All right, y'all. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. I see we have 10 here. I'm Dr. Brandy B, your triple board certified physician. I am a pediatrician, adult psychiatrist, as well as child and adolescent psychiatrist. And through my Facebook live stream, Focus on It Friday, which is right here where you are every Friday at 12 noon Central Standard Time, through my book, Shine, Understanding ADHD So Your Child Can Be a Star, through my speaking engagements, like the one I had last night, um, through the links incorporated on heart health um, and through any other opportunities that I get to spread the good word about and the importance about mental health, I enjoy doing that so that everybody can be the best that they can be, whether in their personal life, just for themselves at school or in the classroom or in the retired life. We have a lot of retirees stopping by to see us and we appreciate them. Um, but for today, Miss Cheryl Dumas is watching. Thank you so much, Miss Nia Nicole. Uh, we've got Miss I hope it's Chai, or is it Chi? I hope I'm saying it right. Um, Gozium, thank you for watching. We've got Caroline Merrick Bryant. She says, hello, Dr. Brandy. And I say hello right back to you. We've got Miss Latrice Mose also watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for joining. Make sure you go ahead and 
tag a friend and invite them over. Let them know that we're here at Dr. Brandy B. Uh, we would love to have them following us so that we can get that number up closer to 3,000. I've got about uh, 75 people more that I need to get, and I know we can do that. So let's go ahead and get started for today. So these are going to be tips for taking the work out of homework. Now, if you have a school-aged child or grandchild or anyone you're rearing, or if you've had children yourself, you know what homework is like, right? So people argue all the time, and even in different countries and cultures, homework is even not a thing. That's not even a thing, right? They figure that whatever is to be learned is to be learned during the school hour, right? That's why kids are at school seven, eight hours a day. Um, and then the time after school is to be spent with your family where learning still doesn't stop, just not in the way of pencil and paper, right? But everything actually in life is a learning experience. And as long as we have breath, hopefully we are all interested in and continuing to learn. But for those kids in America who actually still have homework, uh, especially those who have ADHD, homework can be a very challenging time. A lot of people come to me and they say that homework is one of the times that is most frustrating in their homes because there's a lot of tantruming, there's a lot of inattention, and it's just very difficult for the kids to get focused, sit down, and get things done. So what we're going to do today is just give you a couple of tips to get through that homework period. Now, what is it that I even do and why do I do it? Of course, I'm an ADHD specialist, ADHD expert. That's what I do. That's what I love talking about. And so with ADHD, you have troubles focusing, getting organized, staying still, not talking and blurting, completing tasks, starting tasks, um, turning in tasks. So, right, a lot of children with ADHD, the way that they present actually is that they are not turning in their homework. So they'll stay up all night doing it, struggling to get it done, and still not being able to submit it the next day. And of course, that's going to cause problems with the grade, uh, primarily because homework should just be a grade that a child almost ought to get 100% in, right? Uh, because parents hopefully are checking it, assuming that they can and they know how to. Uh, because I remember even with my mom, you came home, you turned everything off, you did homework, and then you did anything else. And she'll tell you that at a certain grade, she just was like, I don't know what she's doing anymore, so I can't help her or check it, but I can make sure that she does it. And if I see her on the phone, that means she's done it. So if she's trying to do it after she's been on the phone, she's not going to do it. Now, that's how I worked at my house. You may have your own rules at your house, but we do something very similar now. Of course, it's a whole lot more chaotic um, at my house because we've got all sorts of extracurricular activities and my husband and I are doing all sorts of things. But still, the general rule is you come in, you get your homework, you turn off your devices, and then we do everything else. So... That is why homework can be such a difficult time because a lot of children just cannot focus. And I'll just tell you this, parents. Um, a lot of parents will say he can do the work. He just didn't want to. Children in general want to please us. They want to please their teachers. They want to please society. The only reason that a child doesn't do something that they know would be pleasing to us, especially by way of work, is either because they don't understand it or they can't focus on it. So if you find that your child consistently, quote, does not want to do it, then we need to explore that a little bit because there's no reason for a child to be to just not want to do something that comes easy to them. Instead, what they are doing is just not understanding or not being able to focus. Let's see what we have over here. We have um, Miss Priscilla, my sister, is watching. Thank you, Priscilla. Belinda Jones, thank you for watching. We've got Auntie Jessie Maxwell. Thank you for watching. She says hello, and I say hello right back to you. Who else do we have over here? We've got my cousin Annie Bell all the way from Detroit, Michigan watching, and we appreciate you joining us over here at Dr. Brandy B. She is now uh, with a new title that is mother-in-law or mother-in-love, and we want to say congratulations to my cousin on his um, new wedding vows, and congratulations to you on your new title. I am sure you are going to be a fabulous mother in love. Miss Lovey says, I'm asking for prayers for my family. My brother Cornell has brain cancer and it does not look good. And certainly, Miss Lovey, we will pray with you. Um, we will ask God to heal your brother um, or to do his will, whatever that is, but that he will make 
things plain and clear uh, to the family who are having to be by your brother's side. Um, and because that's what we do over here at Dr. Brandy B, right? Uh, it's my show, so I can do what I want to and talk about what I want to. Um, and I believe in prayer and um, I believe in God. So we will definitely be praying for you and your brother and your family. I, I know the effects of cancer and it can certainly um, be a hard thing to deal with. So we, we definitely pray for you and your family at this time. Um, let's see what else we got. Miss Belinda Jones says, but how can they focus and understand phones and games? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. I'm gonna come back to that. Mr. Thomas Myrick is joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, and it Bell says, thank you, Brandy. I love you. And you know, I love you too. Priscilla is offering prayers. Miss Sadie Gresham says that she will keep um, Miss Levy Banks' brother and her family in the prayers. And Miss Belinda Jones is praying as well. So your Dr. Brandy B family is certainly praying with you, praying for you. I mean, we know the, pra the, the power of prayer, right? We, we absolutely know that we're not just saying words out loud with out loud without any hope. Our prayers are filled with hope um, and that is in Jesus Christ. So we, um, I will also ask you all to pray for uh, Dia, Dia Hubbard. Dia Hubbard is my nurse. And if you see me um, at Rudolph Bowling Psychiatry, you know Dia very well. She's not only my nurse for a very long time, as, as long as I've been out of residency, in fact, but she is my very dear friend and uh, she is burying her grandfather today. And uh, but the last six months, six months have been, just been really hard for her. She's buried a father. She's buried an, uh, a maternal uncle. She's burying her maternal grandfather today. And she's also buried a maternal um, grandmother maybe a month or so ago. So I think that's four people. So just lift her and her mother because her mother has lost her father, her mother and her brother in a matter of six months. So. Uh, and it was just her and her brother. So I can only imagine what Ms. Sharon, Sharon Morrison, who I also used to work with as well. So just lift everybody up. And like I always end my shows, you don't know what people are going through, right? And so Dia over at Rudolph Bowling Psychiatry, if you were to call the office, you would never know that she was dealing with all of it. Um, and so just, just send an extra word of prayer for her and comfort. Um, I talked to her yesterday and I said, please take off next week. And if you know Dia, you know that she told me, no, ma'am, please let me come to work. Um, and that's just the type of person that she is. She's committed to everybody, but we really want to pray that she can take some time to be committed to herself. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody says, amen. Love you. And uh, love you. Have my prayers. Uh, Mr. Uh, Marlon Ward. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today. Jacqueline Jones. Harold, thank you for joining. Belinda Jones says, I lost my parents and a cousin within four and a half months. It's so hard. It really is. Death is really never easy. Um, but we know it's a part of life, right? So as we live, we will die. Um, but we know that when people come together and pray with and for us, things do lighten up and get better. So we thank you all for your prayers and your concerns. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about taking the work out of homework. Now, if y'all have been hanging out with me for a long time, and I know that many of you all have, we have a few new people on here today. Um, and we say welcome to Dr. Brandy B and to Focus On It Friday. Um, I love acronyms because guess what? You can jot them down real quick. You can remember them, bring them up to your, 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 your remembrance and use them just at the time that you need them. Um, and so we're going to do one today. For homework, we've got H-W-O-R-K. You know, if you were writing it out, you do an H and an apostrophe, W-O-R-K. So the H is hours that allow for productivity. You want to allow yourself, even as a student, even as a worker, you know, my mama, she'll always wait until about eight o'clock and say, I want to go to these places. I'm like, mama, why are we going at night when it's dark, right? Um, you want to work in hours that are most that allow for the most productivity. So as it was with me and as I told you, it is with my children. As soon as we hit the door, you're already in the momentum of studying. Right. Because we live about eight minutes from the school. You just got done with class. We're going to get a snack. We're going to get right in and we're going to get busy. If we wait until eight or nine o'clock, now we're rushing because we're trying to get ready for bed. We're rushing because they're tired and sleepy. We're rushing because you want them to go away so you can have adult time, spouse time, whatever time. And so we really need to make sure that we are working with 
hours that allow for the most productivity. Even when you get to your jobs, right? If you work on, say you work on a job basis, right? So when you've done your job for the day, you've done for the, you are done for the day. I'm the type of person I get to work and I start working right away, right? I round on Saturdays at a local hospital. I get there super early. I get in and I get my work done. I go super early because there are fewer distractions, right? Early in the morning versus if I waited until the middle of the day, there's staff, there's family, there's visitors, there's all these things that could snag my attention and would mean that I can't get my job done in the same amount. The same as if you are there, you know, working your eight hours, continue to work and make the best of the time that you know you are at your brightest. Tackle those hardest items first and then go to those things that you know are easier for you so that if you run out of steam, you still have enough to get things done. So the H in homework, our acronym is to work at hours that are going to be um, that are going to allow you to be most productive or will allow for the most productivity. All right, let me just check, make sure. Um, we've still got a lot of loves. Miss Cheryl Duma says, sending my prayers and condolences to a very excellent nurse. Dia is absolutely amazing. Love me some Dia. Yes, yes, yes. So lift her up um, uh, today and, and in your future prayers. Uh, Miss Carolyn Marie Bryant says, love and prayers for all. Miss Kawanda Maxwell-Smith. Um, she is tagging someone. We say welcome and thank you for doing that. And we have Michael Jones watching as well. Thank you so very much. Now we're going on to our W, which is where. Where is homework done? If you are an, a senior and you're writing bills, where are you writing your bills? Um, if you are a teacher and you're doing your lesson plans, where are you doing it? Where you do your work is very important, right? Now, you may know with me, I only do these Facebook live streams in one of two places, here or in the car. You've not seen me on the beach, and that might not be a bad idea for me to explore that option, <laughs> but I'm right here. And so you know that when Dr. Brandy B pops up, she's about to bring you some information. The same is with your children. If we allow them to do it on the bed sometimes, on the floor sometimes, in their desk sometimes, it's going to be confusing for the brain. We are truly creatures of habit. And if we get in the habit of doing things the same place, same time, all the time, our brains are ready to know this means let's do work, right? If we're doing homework in the middle of the football field, um, we may be able to focus on it, but we may not be able to get into our groove. Preferably, and hopefully, the place where your child is doing their homework is one that has everything they're going to need. It's going to be silent. It's going to have the books they need. It's going to have the crayons, the pencils, the pens, the protractors, and other equipment uh, that they will need. And again, it is all about being prepared and letting the brain know we are about to settle down to do work. So the W is where, where is it done? Now, somebody said, I always have to do homework in the car. Homework in the car is great if that's what you have to do, but it's not ideal if you're driving down the street, there are red lights, stop lights, you know, accidents that may about be about to happen, the man dancing with that sign trying to sell some liquidation. It's too many distractions. And for a child, especially who has ADHD, we want to limit the distractions. So in this where, this W that this child is going to be studying, it should be somewhere that has few distractions, right? So the where is very important. And the more that you can keep that where the same, that's going to be better for your child to get done. So we've got the hours that are going to allow the most productivity. The W is going to be where they're doing it. Um, that's going to be important. The O is taking off periods or breaks. So if you know um, that as an adult, I can only work 40 minutes straight before I get tired and I need to stand up. Well, then don't try to make yourself work 50 minutes. And for the last 10 of those 50 minutes, make mistakes, just waste time, just set a timer or at the top of every hour, say from 9 to 9.40, I'm going to work hard and strong. And then I'm going to go from, uh, you know, 40 to the next hour and take a break. Now, your boss may have some concerns and complaints about you taking a 20 minute break. But if that's what you need to do, then take that break. Otherwise, you're sitting there playing 
uh, what is it, jigsaw puzzles or something else online. Anyway, just tell yourself, I'm going to take this break. And then that way you're not upset with yourself. So everything is about planning. The better you can plan and prepare yourself, the more successful you will feel your child as well. So if you see them squirming at about 30 minutes, then that means give them a break. Just plan for the break. 30 on, 10 off. 30 on, 10 off. So that they are always eager and ready to go. Now, you're still doing this as soon as they get home from school, but you're allowing them time off to take those breaks. Now, your R is reasonable. What is reasonable for your child? Um, again, some countries and even some districts do not even have homework. But especially if you know that your child is not going to get through 10 sheets of homework in a night, you may need to have a discussion with your child's teacher about how we can reduce that. There are things like 504 plans and IEPs or individualized education plans that can help your child make the workload doable for them. Every child is not the same. And so we really can't expect every child to perform the same. And so if your child is one who needs some special attention, then we need to make sure that we advocate for them to get that. Let's see if we have any. Miss Tori Murph, hello. She's watching us today. Hello and welcome. Um, and then Miss Belinda Jones, she fell out. Uh oh, but I'm glad you are back. So we talked about, we talked about taking the work out of homework, taking the work out of homework. Homework can be a very challenging time. Um, and I've started out by saying, if you just joined us, I started out by saying that every child <coughs> absolutely wants to do what it is that we tell them to do or they want to do what it is that they're supposed to do. But if for some reason they are not, we need to figure out why. And it's two main reasons that I found that especially when it comes to academics, that children will not do their work and will appear to just not want to do it. And that is because they don't understand it or they can't focus on it. So things that we can do to help increase the focus and make homework a more enjoyable and pleasant time for all involved is to H, make sure we're doing it at, at hours that allow for the most productivity, to W, figure out a where that we can always keep the same and reduce distractions, O, schedule off periods where a child can have a break, right? But not an hour long break, just like a five or 10 minute break after they've worked for 30 or 40 minutes at a time. And then the R is to be reasonable, to be honest with ourselves about what it is that our child can or cannot do. Um, maybe they need to not have homework at all. I don't know that that is an option, but you need to talk with your child's teacher and maybe even the special education department at your child's school so that you can figure out what is going to work best for them. And then lastly is the K. We need to do whatever it is that will increase your child's keenness when it comes to focusing. So I've mentioned throughout the discussion today that distractions, distractions, distractions. Well, what exactly are some distractions when we're talking about doing schoolwork? Other siblings, right? If the child is in the same room with another child who is hyperactive or loud or even a baby who's crying, that could be a distraction. Parents can be a distraction because parents are communicating. Parents are watching the TV, which is a distraction in and of itself. Parents are cooking. Maybe the sizzling caught a, uh, the attention of a child who has ADHD and they're just listening to the sizzling of the good old fried chicken or pork chop. Or it could be who knows what, like uh, the, 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 the stuff between the towel, the line between the towels on the wall in the kitchen. You know, all of these things can be distracting. The, the random um, marbles that were left on the table from the day before, they could just start fidgeting with that. The tweed in the chair of the pill, anything can be a distraction for a child who has ADHD. So if we can do our part to limit the distractions, then it is much um, more likely that the child will do better with getting in there, getting the homework completed, and then everybody moving on with life. Now, somebody asked me a question. Um, let me look at my 
comments here. We've got Miss uh, Latamia, Latamia Davis. I hope I said that right. If I didn't, I apologize. But uh, she is watching and we thank you. Miss Jesse says, praying for your nurse and her family. May God heal her wounds. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, Miss Tori Murph, another of my great nurses says, hello, Dr. Brandy B. Love listening and learning from you. Thank you so very much. I think that this is your first time listening uh, as far as speaking, but we appreciate you whether it's your first or your 100th. And first, thank you so very much. Miss Ryan Hinton Smith is watching, and we say welcome again. Uh, welcome back, and we thank you for watching. And Auntie Jesse says great advice. We also have Miss Stephanie Wright Ward, who is watching. If you have questions, go ahead and post them right now. I am going to go back up to a question someone had before. It was actually a comment. Maybe it was a question. Let me find it again. Miss Belinda Jones, it was a question. She says, but how can they focus and understand phones and games? It's easy, Miss Belinda Jones. It is quite easy because there is a difference between concentration and fascination. Fascination are those things that are easy for me to do or are those things that are entertaining and keep my attention. Cell phones, where they're texting. I mean, I'm just vegging out and texting or video games where there's ping, pong, pow, wow. There are sounds, bright lights, constant movement. Um, watching a, a TV show that doesn't require me to think. Anything like that is fascination, right? Now, concentration is quite the opposite. Although it looks like the same thing, it is not. Concentration requires a different part of our brain, different parts of uh, neurons light up. It requires us to really focus. Never have I seen words from a book jump and ping pow, pow wow. So that means we've got to stay focused and keep our eyes moving. Our eyes are doing the movement, movement. Our brains are doing the movement, not the words on the page. And that is the big difference between what fascination is and concentration is. And Miss Jones, don't you get yourself worried and say, oh my God, why didn't I know that? All these other people know that. No, they did it. I will tell you that one of the biggest complaints that parents say when they bring their child in for the first time is that, well, Dr. Uh, Rudolph Bolin, Dr. Brandon, Dr. Brandy B, Dr. Bolin, Dr. Rudolph, doctor, whatever they call me. They say, my child can't have ADHD, but this teacher said, acts like he does, but he can listen to that phone and watch that phone for 24 hours straight without using the bathroom. He did it once and I know. And the first thing I'm going to say is, well, now there's fascination and there's concentration and watching the phone for 24 hours straight without using the restroom is definitely not concentration, right? It doesn't have to be. Now, it can be that your child is reading the best book of their life and they cannot come away from it. And we know what reading is, right? There's reading, which means that you can tell me what you read and answer questions about it when it's over. And then there's calling words which means that you are saying out loud, either phonetically or by memorization, words that you have come in contact with or you know how to pr pronounce based off your phonics or based off whatever else. So calling words and reading are not necessarily the same either. So we have to be careful. Every once in a while, if you see your child and they're reading a book, just say, stop them right where they are and say, tell me about the last three pages. And if they don't have a clue, then we probably are not necessarily reading. If it's a book, Miss Jones, that they are interested in, a series that they love, it still could be fascination and not necessarily concentration. And then the two can kind of mix. But in general, um, I just can't say that a child can't folk can fo I just can't extrapolate that a child can focus on their homework because they can focus on their phone. They're not the same. Let me know if that makes sense, everybody. Let me know if that makes sense. Let's see what we got. Miss Belinda Jones gives me a thumbs up. Miss Terry Bush is watching. Hello and good afternoon and welcome. I think this may be your first live uh, video. We are so glad that you are here. She says, good point. And y'all, Miss Bush is a former retired educator. She was a principal, assistant principal at a middle school. So she knows y'all. She knows and we appreciate her for all that she did in her school system miss stephanie wright ward i think i welcomed you if you're watching out there but if not please know that you are welcome oh 
Miss Stephanie Wright Ward has a question. My son has ADHD and has a lot of meltdowns at school, but not at home. We couldn't figure out why I recently changed his school to be with me. So um, there could be a lot of reasons, Miss Ward, that a child with ADHD has meltdowns at school and not at home. One of the biggest reasons that a child with ADHD uh, is having meltdowns at school, but not at home, I uh, could be because they can't focus in class, right? And so here's the deal. Remember I said kids, they want to do it, but they either can't focus or they don't understand it. So if I throw a tantrum, the teacher's focus, my mama's focus, my dad is focus, everybody's focus is on my tantrum and not on my work. They take me out of school. They got my mama. They got all this stuff going on, right? So now I'm at home. Or I'm in the principal's office. I'm not doing schoolwork. And whether it's because I can't focus or I don't understand it needs to be looked into a little bit far, further. Now, another reason why, I mean, there's so many reasons why children tantrum at school and not at home. Um, I, I start thinking about interpersonal things with the teacher. Um, I love educators. Y'all know I do. I don't have nothing bad to say about them. But teachers can be, we don't want to call them bullies, but... Teachers have people that they like, just like doctors have patients that we like and patients that we go, oh, my God. Right. And if I were to say that I didn't have patients like that, I would be lying. And I, y'all know I don't lie to you over here. If you are difficult and not if your illness is difficult, but if there is a difficult patient and sometimes being difficult is part of their illness. Right. Especially if we're talking about mental illness. Um, it is challenging for us, especially me, because I like to get people well. And so if I never seem to be able to get you well, then if I see your name on the schedule, if I see your next up, I may have to have a deep sigh and a prayer because I want you well and we're not able to do that. And so for teachers, the teacher may be a little bit perplexed, confused, frustrated because this child is always tantruming in their class or they may not know how to teach that child effectively and efficiently. And so it seems like you've moved your child to a school with you. And hopefully, Ms. Ward, that has proven to be better. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on and what might be the issue. And maybe you have a better relationship with your child's teacher. And so you can better understand what that is. But usually, you know, school has much more structure than home does. And so it's usually going to be related to either the understanding or the focus. And keep in mind that if you can't focus, you can't understand. So if you're not able to focus, you're not going to know the answer. And it's going to look like grade wise that you don't understand. But in reality, we know for a fact that children who have ADHD can understand quite well. But if they can't focus, they can't produce the grades. Let me know, Miss Ward, if that answered your question. Let me know if that answered your question. Miss Melinda Jones says that that makes perfect sense. Thank you. Right. Fascination versus concentration. And I'm going to show y'all my book because y'all know I talk about that over at Shine, Understanding ADHD So Your Child Can Be a Star, right? I talk about that over there. That's one of my things I've been saying, that folk fascination and concentration are not the same. And we should really make sure that we're figuring out, is my child ex being asked to concentrate or is my child being asked to, folk, to um, be fascinated by something? Very good. Let's see who else. Mr. Donnell Burrell, you have not been here all of 2022. My mama said, where is the man? I said, I don't know, mama, but I was going to reach out to you today. So we are so glad that you are here. Please know that you have been missed and we hope that all is well with you and your family. Miss Stephanie Ward says it makes perfect sense. Awesome. That is what we like to do. We like to make perfect sense of things that we already knew and it made sense, but we just needed Dr. Brandy B to break it down for us. And that is why I am here. Miss Caroline Bryant says, great answers from a, reti from a retired educator. Another retired educator. Y'all know I love teachers. That was what I wanted to do before I decided I was going to be a physician. I was uh, wanting to teach. And I guess, you know, now that I think about it, in some ways, I'm still teaching. I'm just teaching parents. Uh, and I'm teaching people who love kids and are raising kids things that they need to know, right? So I'm not directly working with the students in that capacity, but I get to teach you all. And that is so much fun. I get to break things down. 
Miss Belinda Jones says, I'm the oh my God patient mom. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know what? I tell all of my parents when I first meet them, as long as you work with me, I'll work with you. Right. Um, the people that are frustrating are the ones that don't want to take recommendations because they already know. And if you if you if you're my patient, you know that I'm very much parent driven because nobody knows your child like you do. And I and I like to honor that. I don't know your kid and I don't ever want to know your kid as well as you do because you take them home and I'm not taking them home with me because, you know, I have a three year old, a five year old and a seven year old. So I have my hands full and I have a husband. OK, so I don't want to bring your kid to my house. That is your job. Right. I want to encourage you to do that. Some parents just need more encouragement. Right. And so I have to be energized and ready to take all that on. But some parents don't want to take recommendations. They already know everything, but they want results, but they don't want to listen to the person giving them. We got to try something, even if it fails. Right. We got to try it to see if it will fail, but they don't want to try anything, but they keep coming back. What you coming back for? Just stay at home. Don't call me and ask my opinion if you don't want it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And that's not you. That's not you. All right, let's see. Um, I'm sure she is, says Miss Ward. Uh oh, I got lost and forgot what we were talking about right there. Um, I'm sure she is. I have an idea about what that is, though. Uh, let's see. My Auntie Eva is joining us from the Philadelphia area. We thank you. She says, hello, my beautiful niece. And I say, hello, my beautiful aunt. I need to touch bases with you later on. Oh, Miss Stephanie Ward says, yes, his class is directly across the hall from my office. So you're able to keep in touch. And sometimes just knowing that makes the difference. Miss Janice Denise Williams is watching and we appreciate you for joining us. Miss Chantrice Perry, all the way from the big city of Huntsville, Alabama. Yes, yeah, my cousin, y'all. I love her. I love her. That's my uh, big little cousin, right? She and my cousin, Ashley, they are bigger than me, but that's all right. I'm still older. I always will be. We've got Miss Dina Maxwell Stafford is watching. Thank you so much. Miss Dina is tagging folks. Again, we thank you. Miss Janice Denise Williams says, love your lives. It helps me to understand more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all know there are several lives over here, right? There are about a hundred. If you have a topic that's just burning, or if you have a question right now, go ahead and answer it. Because I tell you, when you contact me and you make an appointment, and get scheduled to see me, y'all. And first of all, it's going to be a wait. And second of all, you're going to have to pay me, right? You get me for free right here. And I'm not ashamed of that. I used to say, oh, Lord, I can't charge people. Then I thought, girl, you got three kids. And at one point, they're going to all be in college at the same time. I will have a, a fourth-year college student, a third-year college student, and a first-year college student at the same time. Look at how I did that. I don't know what we were thinking, but we got to pay for it, right? So come on over here and get this free information. Miss Ward says, how do we make an appointment with you? Ah, right on cue. You can, um, let's see, you can uh, look me up. Okay, so my phone number, my phone number at my office, which is Rudolph Bowling Psychiatry, Rudolph Bowling Psychiatry, is uh, 205-948-7129, 7129-7129. Okay, 205-948-7129. Okay. Um, the website is www.rbpsychiatry.com. That's Rudolph Bowling Psychiatry.com. Go ahead and fill out everything under the form section. All right. It is quite a wait list, right? But right on there, doc, uh, uh, focus on the Friday at the top. And we'll know what that means. All right. All right. Mr. Donnell says, hey, miss you guys too. I've been working 60 plus hours weekly. It's been kind of crazy lately, but yes, all is well. Well, you know, you got to check in and let us know that you are okay because we miss you. You are our resident dad. You represent all of dads across the, the world. And so when you are not present, we definitely notice. We appreciate you being so faithful and watching us. Miss Stephanie Ward says, you said the teacher is frustrated and doesn't know how to deal with him. I'm sure she is. Yes, 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 yes. Because again, teachers are uh, like me. I heal kids. I'm a physician. I heal people. Um, and so educators, uh, they educate people. And so if there is a disconnect about how to educate a child, I'm sure that that's very frustrating. Um, but we have to realize as a physician myself, right? Um, and that's why even though everybody looks the same in general, really everybody does not. 
And so people say, oh my God, you asked these questions, you knew, are you looking into my window? But then they might say something that really throws me off. That happened actually this week. And I said, oh my God, in all the years of doing this, this is a symptom that I've never had before. Um, when I was asking about, does your child forget? That was on my personal page. Um, because I like to show people different ways that ADHD presents that they may not be aware of. And so I said, does your child forget to, I don't know, I was listening to some random stuff and somebody said their child forgets to flush the toilet. I'd never heard that before. Right. But you could forget to flush the toilet all the time. And so how do you know that ADHD forgot? Because it's like, baby, what did you have for lunch? I forgot. I forgot. And it's more like, a, I don't want to think about it. Or Miss Jones, I don't want to concentrate on it. So the easier thing to say is, I forgot. All right. So forgetfulness is actually one of the nine possible symptoms that a child can have with ADHD. Let's see what else we got. Miss Dina Stafford says, will you please post or share office number? Absolutely will. Miss Shelley Stuttered says, how do you explain to people that some kids really do need the meds that are given in the way they are given for a reason and help them understand it is not too much for the child? Now, Miss Shelly Stuttered, who are we explaining this to? Who? Tell me who we're explaining this to. Tell me who we are explaining this to, and I'll tell you the best way to explain it to them. Let's see who else. And thanks for watching, Miss Shelly Stuttered. Uh, welcome. Miss Melissa Rice, we say welcome. Miss Caroline uh, Bryant says she just ordered my book. I say thank you. You all know how to order the book. Um, it's on all your social media, not social media. Uh, it's on all the platforms where you order books. But if you want me to sign it and personalize it and to know that you bought it and send you lots of love and kisses, then you need to get it at uh, www.shineadhdshop, uh, adhd.shop. Shine, let me write all this. Let me stop one second. Miss, um, who was that that asked me that question? I'm waiting on your answer about who we're explaining this to. Okay, so Rudolph Bowling, R-U-D-O-L-P-H, Bowling Psychiatry, D.C., and that's www. Uh -oh. Okay, www.rbpsychiatry.com. Because guess what? Psychiatry still trips, tricks me up as a as a word uh, every once in a while. And the number is Stacy's on here. She's watching and she's probably cringing right now. Nine four eight. Stacy is my amazing nurse, y'all. I am blessed to have the nurses that I do. It's probably because my mom is a nurse and I treat her so awesome. She was a fabulous nurse. I asked my mama questions all through med school and residency because uh, I didn't know the answer and she did. Um, let me see. And then my book, Shine, is uh, book. Dot shop. Right. People in services, not like friends because I don't care what they think. Perfect. Because you know that's what I was getting at. We don't care what people are thinking over here. People in services. Still not sure what you mean by services, but I'm thinking that you probably mean like educators. And here's the deal, right? Um, It's really hard to make somebody understand something uh, that's not in their lane. I, I don't want that to sound ugly, but I appreciate my educator friends, and I have a lot of friends who are educators, all the way from superintendents that are like friends, you know, down to people that sweep the floors. And I consider all those people educators, right? Because they're helping keep my kids and your kids and everybody else's kids in line. Um, but they may not be able to understand why a particular medicine is chosen, why a particular dose is chosen. What I need the educator to do is to give me the symptoms that the child is having. And educators, I'm glad you asked that question. The best way you can help me is to tell me when does the medicine, or tell the parents, don't call me, all right? Tell the parents, does it ever start working? Tell the parents if it starts wearing off prematurely. Prematurely would be before the end of the school day. Um, it, are there any breakthrough periods where then it starts working again before a little per, per, uh, period it doesn't work? So, for example, 
if a child can focus eight o'clock to noon, but then doesn't focus from noon to three, that means something different to me if they're on medicine from a child who can focus from eight to noon, um, but can't focus from noon to two, but can focus to two to three. So there's a chunk of time where they can't focus, but it's flanked by two periods when they can. That's the kind of information that I need from, from educators. Now, if you're talking other physicians, again, other, other specialists, other specialties, and I can talk about pediatricians because I am one. They don't understand the medicines. They don't even understand ADHD the way that I do, right? And I know this because I train besides general pediatricians. Um, and so they are not going to be as aggressive with medicines. They may not even start them. They do a lot of we'll watch it and wait and see. And as I told y'all last week, if the sun comes up at six, we don't need to wait till noon to see if it's going to start shining. It's already shining. What we're waiting for. We can make our plans go on our picnic. OK, now you may have to plan for some rain, but the sun is still shining. That got to do with the sun. The sun is still shining. Right. Um, so really. I don't know that we need to do a whole lot of explaining about medications. We just need them to give me symptoms. And let me worry about medications. That sounds ugly, but I really didn't mean it to. Y'all know what I'm saying, don't you? Let me do what I do, because I let them do what they do, whoever these service people are, right? Now, your pediatrician may have some concerns about your child's weight. Um, and, you know, so we, we can fix that. Whatever the concern is that this person has, right? I'm your chef. Tell me what I need to do. Say it doesn't have enough salt, but don't go adding your own salt. Because I might not like your brand of salt. I may have my own. So now you put your brand in and you know what my response is? Take over. Just cook the rest of the meal. But they don't want to do that because they, they didn't even know the recipe, so they sent them to me. Does that sound okay? I don't want to be ugly. Y'all know I'm not like that. But let me do what I do. Now, is a second opinion okay? It sure is, and I'll help you get one. I'll help you get one. But I'll tell you this, my friends who are child psychiatrists, they call me to say, well, what do you recommend for my child? I'm taking him to his doctor. I'm just going to leave that right there. Let me know if that answers your question, um, because I'd like to make sure that I answer your question, Ms. Stutter. Who else we got? Let's see. Angela Bowler, my sister, is watching. All right. She says, hello, Miss Brooke Ledbetter is watching. Miss Shelley says, that makes sense to me. Absolutely. Um, Miss Angela Bowler says, and don't take away any either before asking you. Absolutely not. I am the chef in this kitchen. I don't cook in real life, but I know how to cook up some treatment for my children. I birthed three, but I probably have seen about 20,000. And I care about all of them the same. Once you step into my vicinity, I'm yours. You're mine. And we fix things over here. Right? Let's see what else we got. Miss Shelly Stutter says, yes, yes, we fix stuff. I'm not just, you know, talking about something I read about. Talking about what I know. What I've practiced. Right? And I take this very seriously. If y'all know Erica Badu, she was not the only person that was sensitive about her stuff. Right? Miss Janice Denise Williams says, if a child with ADHD has a lot of anger and is on stimulants and is advised to switch to non-stimulants, can the child still focus? So non-stimulants are a good um, option for some children. I will tell you that stimulants are typically thought to be first line because they work consistently. Um, they are most likely to work consistently and be most effective in most children. They certainly have their place. But again, like I said before, it's hard to, you know, I'm a psychiatrist, not a psychic. So I don't know which medicine is going to work on a child until we try it. We've got to try something in order to attempt to get any effects. Otherwise, I don't even want to see folks back until they're really ready to make a change. Now, a parent may say, well, we just want to stay on this. And that's fine because that's your child, right? But don't come to me in April talk about we're about to fill third grade. Because guess what? I'm a physician and not a magician. When I told you in November we were going to fail third grade, you wanted to keep things the same. 
Let me enjoy my summer break. We're going to try to do this, but I can't make any promises. We've lost five months. Right? All right. Let's see. Remember, the teacher is not your enemy. The teacher runs studies all year long. And many teachers have 15, 20 years of running studies. They've been teaching the same grade for 20 years. But all of a sudden, when they say to you, your child is doing things different than all the other study participants that they taught in 20 years, you better believe them. Believe them. All right. Let's see what else we got. Nan Mays is in the building. Thank you so much for joining. Miss Shelley says, I will be calling next week to talk to your nurse for the rest of the story. Thanks for everything you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember, that is a good point. Wherever you see me, call the nurse at that center. Do not call, do not inbox me with your child's questions if you if you're already seeing me as a patient. That is a HIPAA violation to be on uh, Zuckerberg's Facebook talking about we need to increase something because I'm not going to respond. Okay, but I do. I may do a screenshot and send it to the nurse, and she's going to call you and remind you. Please don't contact her. Talking about your child. Mark Zuckerberg is watching. All right, let's see what else we got. Miss Ward says, do some medicines cause children to be moody or angry? Absolutely. So there are 18 possible um, criteria that a child can have for ADHD. You can be in a tenant presentation predominantly, predominantly hyperactive impulsive, or you can be combined. None of those 18 criteria is moodiness or irritability, but by God, Irritability is a significant, an amazing participant in ADHD. There are three reasons that a child or medication can have irritability, okay? They can be irritable because they have ADHD. They can be irritable when their medicine is working. They can be irritable, irritable when their medicine is wearing off. So it takes a really close eye um, and some note taking to pay attention to when is the child irritable. Is the child irritable just in the morning and when the medicines are working? Is the child irritable just in the afternoon or when the medicines wear off? Or is the child irritable every day of the week? And here's a little tidbit. Now, y'all got me talking about medicines over here. I don't really re talk about medicines here because it scares people. They get scared, right? Um, but you need to give the medicine on the weekend if you want to know what the child is doing during the daytime. You have no idea what the medicine is doing to the child or how the child is performing or behaving if you don't give it on weekends, right? So, um, but yes, some kids do get more irritable, aggressive with the medicines, um, but that is not a very common finding. Absolutely. Miss Natasha Johnson, thank you for stepping over here in to Focus on It Friday World. We appreciate you being here. Mama says, always good information and helpful. That's my mama. Y'all, my mama did a good job. Don't y'all think my mama did a good job? She did a good job. She did a good job. She did a good job. Um, and don't you worry about being a single mother or a young mother or anything else. My mama can tell her story best, but I'll share with you. My mama has been a mama since she was 14, right? She still did pretty darn good. She did pretty darn good. So doesn't matter what kind of mama you are, how old you were, how young you were. Grandmamas, you can do it. Great grandmamas, you can do it. Everybody can do it. We just need to ask for some help. And that's why you are here. Let's see what else we got. Miss Bush says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge, Hosea 4 and 1, and we are being educated, right? So anybody over here at Dr. Brandy B., there is no excuse. If you just can't get enough of Dr. Brandy B and you just can't wait until Friday, y'all do know that there are more videos already in store, a hundred or, or more, because I've been doing this since May of 2000. And I'm here for the most part every Friday. I didn't feel like coming today, y'all. I was tired. It's been a long week. But you know why I came? Because y'all come. Y'all come every week. Y'all show up for me. So guess what I'm going to do? Get this little raspy voice and show up for y'all. And I appreciate y'all being here. And I try not to waste your time because time is precious, right? And I love, 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 love educating folks, getting folks over here so that we can learn because absolutely our kids perish because we don't know. And they can continue to perish because we know and we won't act accordingly. All right, Miss Shelly says she did an amazing job. That was for you, mama. Miss Jessie, Auntie Jess says your mom did a marvelous job. Look at there. My mama is so sweet, y'all. She is so sweet. She is. I told y'all she was a nurse, but she don't really understand mental illness. So we are learning. We are teaching mama too. 
she, and she don't know how to do Zoom real well either, but we working on that as well. All right, y'all, what else we got? I love and receive the information. I want to be able to better help my child. Absolutely. And that is what I am all about. Again, I have school-aged children myself. Um, and so hats off to teachers. Went to a basketball game last week and I thought, good Lord, teachers do this all day. Ain't no way in the world. Uh, a kid's coming to office and in 15 minutes, tear it up. And I'm like, ooh, we, thank goodness we only have 15 minutes. So teachers are the real MVPs. Auntie Eva says, mama is so sweet. Yes, she is. She is, she is. Now she'll get you told, but you gotta work at that. She you gotta you gotta push her. You gotta push her. All right, y'all. Any other questions? No other questions. I think I got all of your questions. If I miss your questions, say me, 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 me. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. All right. Otherwise, I'm gonna get out of here. Here's my book, Shine. Y'all, it is not um very long book, but it's jam-packed with everything you need to know to uh help your child be a star. It really is. Um, a doctor friend of mine, um, and real, well respected in the community, texted me last night. He bought the book when it launched, and I launched last June. And uh, he bought, he texted me last night, y'all, and he said, um, I just got a chance to read your book. Oh my God, this is awesome. I can't put it down. Right. And so, not only is it an easy read, because I didn't write it for my colleagues. I wrote it for parents, and I know that parents come in all flavors, all education levels, so I don't want anybody to say the words too big. You can be a master level, a PhD level, or you can have finished about fifth grade and pick this book up and know everything that you need to know. And the good part is that you can do like what I did. See how I've marked the book? So with paper clips, so if somebody says, well, what page is such and such on? You can go back to it. It's got everything here. I mentioned IEPs and 504s. It's in here. Um, I mentioned homework. I mean, all that stuff is in here. So between that book, listening to my lives, and then if you need to make an appointment with me, um, then we can do that. Attending my live events. I know y'all don't like to pay to hear Dr. Brandy B, but at my live events, y'all, you get all of this, but you get these questions about medicine, right? Because again, I don't like to talk about medicine over here for two reasons. I need some way to get paid and I need, um, you know, something that drives you to want more, right? Because everybody doesn't want medicine. They may want to, all the behavioral tips and I want whatever it is that the parent needs, I want to be able to meet them there. All right, so that is it. Uh, Mama says, Thank you to my baby girl. You know, I love you. Auntie Judy says, Dr. Brandy B, where does OCD fall on the mental health issues? So OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, is in the lines with an anxiety disorder. Um, and anxiety disorders actually, not ADHD as I would like to believe, but it's actually anxiety disorders that are, that are most common. Those are the most common disorders. And so OCD, you have obsessions and you have uh, compulsions. So it is completely different from ADHD completely different. But these are people who have repeated thoughts that they can't get out of their minds, or they have a repeated actions that they feel like they have to do. Oftentimes, or something bad will happen if they don't. That's what they feel. Um, and so it is not at all related to ADHD, but you can have a lot of anxiety um, that is associated with ADHD. Very, very, very good question. Keep up the great work, says Auntie Jesse. Carolyn says, love this. Thank you. Miss Sadie says, great information. Thank you. Nan uh, May says, amazing as always. She gives me a lot of trouble. Miss Shelly Stutter says, get in the book for sure. I did not know you had a book. Yes, ma'am, I have. See, because that's the thing. You know, I always just kind of feel slimy when you tell people you're selling something. Um, but really, uh, there's all kinds of stuff to sell. So watch out for my upcoming program. I did one in the fall, y'all, called um, Mommy's Time Out. And you don't think mommy's need a timeout, but mommy's need a timeout. Mr. Donnell Burrell could not come because he's not a mom, but he sent his wife. Several of you came on here and we had people to just come talk about what women need as far as our care. We talked about traveling. Um, oh, my God. We had so much fun. It was all day. We had a fashion show. It was good stuff. And so we're going to do that again, again coming up soon. I also did um, an ADHD crash course where we did take a deep dive into medicines and everything else. I My wait list, y'all, is very, very long. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get more people in because I know there are a lot of people out there that need help. Um, but it's just me. I am just but one person. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get that done as safe and secure as far as HIPAA as I can. So 
you know, just pray for me. Cause again, I get tired over here. I get tired, but I'm trying to do the good work that I know God has placed on my life to do. This is actually my calling and I love it. Um, and we just want to give my husband a shout out and my kids, um, because they, they share me with a lot of people. They share me with a lot of people and my mommy too. She's a widow. So if you have a widow for a parent, you know that, you know, you're trying to entertain them, your families. And so, so pray for Dr. Brandy B because she gets tired sometimes like I was today. Ordered the book, says Miss Jones. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I shipped off an order yesterday. I'll get yours in the mail uh, that are ordering today very soon. Getting the book for sure. Miss Priscilla says you're rocking today. Thank you, my sister Sierra Bridgman. Thank you for watching. Ju Auntie Judy says awesomeness. Uh, Miss Latrice Mose says thank you, Dr. Brandy B, for all you do. I wish I had the book and your services when my 24 and 22 year olds were kids. I've got the book now. Great job. Thank you so very much. Miss Shelly Stewart is sending prayers. Miss Stephanie Wright Ward is sending prayers. And guess what? We know that those prayers, I feel them. They keep me encouraged. They keep me lifted. They keep me going. Um, you know, some people will never tell me thank you, but it's just good enough when people say, come back and say, why did we not find you sooner? Or look at my kids' uh, report card. Or, you know, uh, apparently it's gotten out in my friend community of doctors. So all these doctors are lining up and they're texting me. Um, and so we know that ADHD is real. We believe it's real over here. We absolutely believe that. And we know that it doesn't have to be that way forever. Your kid actually can be a star, right? Just with whatever they have, they've already got everything in them. But more importantly, you have everything you need in you as a parent, as a grandparent, as a guardian, as a foster mom or dad. As a teacher, you have everything in you that you need to parent the child you were given. And I always tell parents, make sure you're parenting the child that you were given and not the child that you hoped for, because those two children may not be the same. And if you parent the child that you were given, your life and theirs is going to be better. Because you're going to be at Dr. Brandy B. You're going to be reading books. You're going to be listening to the teacher and believing the teacher and trying to, to discern, is the teacher being ugly and mean? Or is the teacher telling me the truth and I'm in denial? Because denial is real. Because we want to believe that we got the child that we hoped for. But sometimes we got a child that's better. But we won't allow our child's better to shine because we're still holding on to what we hoped for. So sometimes you got to let go of those hopes. Hope is for the future. Hope is not for the present and it's certainly not for the past. So whatever we hoped that we would get eight years ago, seven years ago when we birthed, we got to let that go. And we got to hope that the child that we're looking at can be better and can shine in the future. I hope that they reach somebody. I hope that they touch somebody. I hope that they encourage somebody to know that when you look at that baby, when they get out of school today, all, all I want you to see is radiance about them. All I want you to see is the shine in their eyes. All I want you to know is that I love you. Hug that baby and tell them you love them. If you're an educator, hug that baby. Tell them you love them. That may be the only hug, the only love that they get all day long because so many parents are hurting either from their own mental illness, their own substance abuse, or to be quite honest, their own fatigue. So tell that baby they can do it. Tell them they are smart. Tell them they've got everything within them. But make sure you tell yourself first. Make sure you tell yourself first. Thank you, says Miss Bush. Thank you for all your help and advice. Thank you, says Miss Sadie. Miss Sadie is great. Some amazing kids. We know that you all can do the absolute same. Miss Ebony Sneed is watching and we appreciate you. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I, I stayed with y'all a long time last week. Now, y'all got Dr. Brandon B over here. Y'all going to send me lunch or at least some warm tea. I wore myself out today. But I love y'all. I love, this is what I do. Um, and I'm tired most days when I leave work uh, just because I want kids to do better. And I know that they can. Um, but we as parents just have to make sure that we step up and do what's best for them. Right. We got to make sure that we uh, don't wear ourselves out trying to convince people about what we know about our kid, because they may not know what's best for our kid. And so we've got to be good parents. That's what we were charged to do. All right, y'all, I'm get out of here. I'm Dr. Brandy B., your triple board certified child and adolescent psychiatrist. And through my Facebook live stream, focus on it Friday through my best selling book. It's not just a book, but it's a best selling book. Shine, understanding ADHD so your child can be a star through my speaking engagements. Y'all, if you need me to come to your church, if you need me to come to your event, 
go ahead and book me. Let me know. I am willing to come um, because I am an expert and I'm passionate about what I do. Um, and I'm only going to bring you the truth in a way that you can understand it and feel it. And hopefully in a way that'll be transformational for your life. Uh, reach out to me on Facebook. Keep Continue to follow me. Please share me with your friends and have them to follow me too. So I can get my numbers up so more people can hear and know the good word. I love y'all and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.